I'm Richard Porter. I'm Johnny Smith. And this is Smith & Sniff, a podcast in which two friends talk about cars, and this week a lady who lived in a car. I've got a rug around my legs. <laughs> you still cold? <laughs> oh, I'm absolutely ah. freezing, mate. Absolutely Someone freezing. sent us a message after last week's show. Oh, I'm um, freezing. It's freezing. And said, since Johnny's always mentioning how cold he is... Um, he needs to get, and they sent a link to some sort of action blankets. <laughs> what do you mean, an action blanket? It's called an action blanket. I think it's made by those people. I can't that remember. That just the name sounds of the company, like it's definitely sexual connotations there. Do you fancy a dive under the action blanket? It's very. Okay, shall I get the old uh, action blanket out, love? Uh, no, don't bother. I'm Seriously, tired. no, it's okay. Um, hand warmers. No, it's all right. No, I. It's uh, well. That's the reason why we're going to knock our house down, Rich, because it's fundamentally crap. So, it's it's not insulated to the current regulations, and it's it's fired by oil, and it's just old and s- bad seventies, not even good seventies. I, I forgot to tell you actually last week. I start the new year going backwards in technolo- technological terms because the the laptop I'm recording this podcast on is my backup laptop from two thousand and eight. So um, my my normal laptop just had a bit of a brain hemorrhage. Um, in fact, it did it the day after New Year's Day, and um, and I was like, "Oh, bobbins, what what can I do while I'm sending it away?" And I just dug out the old one, and she struck up. It was like a barn find laptop. <laughs> 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 what? So you mean it's worth nine grand? I, I'm, I'm thinking there's some dust on it. I'm hoping that maybe, uh, yeah, I'm going to get someone coming along like a, a cash in the attic and they'll go, oh, wow, a, a MacBook 2007. Yeah, in finished in the black. That was the run out model. So it was the last of the old spec. Now very, very durable keyboard. Good feel to the controls. Yeah, was, was it? I'm trying to remember what they were like then. All I can picture is one of I those, got, um, I got those translucent edition. blue ones. <laughs> but I know it's not. They oh, were no, sort I of got. 90s, weren't they? Mine's quite thick. It's it's probably an inch thick. I'm looking at the thickness, and which is a lot for a laptop now, isn't it? And um, it does it look like a sex pest laptop? That no, it's not quite. It's not quite uh, on that. We level. have discussed this on the show. It's not before, a U tree laptop. We, no, no. We always see men in motorway service areas and on trains using <laughs> sex pest spec laptops for some reason. Oh, we have mentioned it on the show because somebody SPL. Sex pest laptop. Well, somebody pointed out they're probably it's, it, they're work laptops, and they that's why they're in motorway service areas on trains. They're people who have been given that computer f- by their job, and they need that size of laptop for whatever it is they do. They're probably like don't a believe it. Structural engineer or something. No, they don't. But there's, you no. cannot escape the fact that a certain thickness and dimensions, like width and and height of laptop, looks sex pesty or Cold War hacker. <laughs> You know what I mean? Because <laughs> no, because, because surely well, movies have taught us nothing else. Is that it, you'd know if they were a hacker because as they they use it every time they type in a command line, it goes. Oh, that's true. And they also they dress really dishevelledly and live with their mums. That always yes. seems to be a prerequisite of being a successful hacker. You never um, get a well turned out hacker, do you? Don't get like a, a no. hacker who's just like really really immaculately dressed. No. Smells smells good. Or a hacker that's a bit of a swordsman slash swordswoman. Ooh, bloody hell, talking of um smelling good. Yeah. Um we've mentioned before, um I think about, you know, excessively musky men. Yes. Like like artificial musk, you know, yeah. men who really splash on. And you left me that slightly creepy message the I other day d- to tell me <laughs> that you've been splashing brutes on to excess. <laughs> I Which, did. Um, a, a, was that? I think that was a straight three second glug down the neckline. Well, it was all. You the, count to I'll, three. Imagine it was pouring for three seconds. That's a lot of liquid onto the shirt. You must have honked. Oh, my son <laughs> went to give me a hug. He went, God, Daddy, that's a bit strong. I was like, yeah, of course it is. <laughs> just the way we like it. <laughs> well, I bring this up. Not, not, you've just, I've just reminded myself have you got of it? that sinister message you left me. Yeah, I'll have to dig it out. I'll bung it on the end of the show if I can find it, because it was, it was creepy. <laughs> the reason I bring up musky men is because I was just walking down the street the other day uh, with our dog, and this, musky man. there was an old shape over Finch Range Rover 
pulled up really tidy looking and not too blingy it was nice quite tasteful it just had different wheels on it which were quite nice and um it was it was you know sort of quite smartly understated as i got closer the driver opened the door and i was hit about a second later with a wall of musk it was <laughs> incredible like if i had a sword i reckon i could have just cut a cube of musk was it, a, was out it an of absolute the air. was it a pheromone fog the bloke the bloke who got out he wasn't he was quite smartly dressed though. he was quite well turned out but then he got a baseball cap on as well and quite a young guy but he had musked up to an insane degree i was thinking it's strong in the open air what was it must be like if you were sitting in the Range Rover with him? You'd, you'd probably suffocate. That would be uh, if you were going to measure it in foo oranges. That would mm. be that would be an eight foo orange count. You know, like the Beaufort scale, is it for wind? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm go- I'm going to measure it not in magic trees because that's too obvious. Let's go older yeah. school. Um, foo orange. If anyone remembers the foo, is it a few orange or foo orange? I F- always say foot orange. Oh, foot orange. Well, I don't do foo. French. I just let the funky music do the talking. <laughs> but, you know, I I really... Sorry. I absolutely love that song. Can I just say? Yeah, I do. And I'm pretty sure that none of Girls Aloud have ever been able to speak French, but I'll stand corrected if they can. Um, well, then... But then they re-recorded that song in French. What? Which is a kind of irony that there's not really a word for, but... Anyway, yeah. Oh, bugger. There is, look it up. I didn't know there that. Is, it, you, they re-recorded it in French. Oh, well, but, I stand I presume completely it still goes. correct. Well, that just Well, no, that doesn't... I mean, they probably age. just had the words written down. I mean, it doesn't necessarily mean they speak French. I don't know. Um, do you know what a foot orange reminds me of, though, is, is when I was a kid, when I was mm. at primary school, one of the lads in my class, Nick, his dad was the dealer principal of a Vauxhall Opal garage. Um, yes. And he always had senators not egg crate senators but before pre like monza monza shape okay senators. yes yes yeah those were usually his company cars because he was the boss and obviously they were all demos you know because he's a car dealer so um i think he might have smoked i can't remember it's, you know it was the 80s so yes he did to, is the answer to, to the car that. fresh yeah yes yeah car dealer 80s ding yes he smoked um but to keep the keep the car sm- smelling fresh, <laughs> always a foot orange from the rearview mirror. And Absolutely. And do you remember the activation process of the foot orange? No, because the the middle the, the foot orange means orange light, doesn't it? And it's and and the the, the it was a traffic light design for people who haven't seen these air fresheners. Eighties air seventies air fresheners, yeah. And the the middle light, the orange one, was actually um, not just printed on the cardboard rectangle. That dangled from your rearview mirror. It was like a sort of a, a, almost like a, the nose of a bullet-shaped compartment of smell, and then on the back of the cardboard rectangle there were perforations that let the smell escape. Is that how it worked? However, if I remember right. Every However, single foot orange, there was a pin slipped into the cardboard sheath. What? And was you there? would you would prick the back of the um, the orange, and then thus, yeah, because when you buy them, they're sealed. I suppose so. You have to prick, and they gave you the pin in order to start it and to begin the process, and that's what I loved about it. There was a oh. ceremony to it. There was a oh. bit of ceremony. And then it would bleed through the foam but You know the how back. you do magic trees, though? You're supposed to leave the sheath on a bit. Yes. But nobody well, does. No, I didn't know that. And um, I lent my car. I had a, a, a Seat Leon long-termer from Evo. And I lent it to a colleague at Top Gear who went and allowed a, a TV film crew to be transported around in it. And TV film crews just always make cars smell for some reason. Well, it's sort of, it's trench foot and a bit yeah. of BO and probably a no-name energy drink, the, the combination yes. of the three. And I would add wet grass and stale crisps. <laughs> oh, yeah. Possibly Someone will have stale tipped. tobacco. Someone will have tipped a packet of frazzles just as they were climbing in the car and trodden them nicely into the carpet. And I seem to remember they cleaned up the interior. They smashed one of the back lights with a tripod by mistake while they were loading the boot, which was irritating. And, Seriously? Um, yeah. And they um, they uh, tidied it up, but it still smelled. And so I, in desperation, I... And this was like one afternoon they had it because they, they were desperate for a car they needed to get somewhere. And... Um, I I had to get a magic tree. I've never bought one before. 
This is, you know, it's about, what, 10 years ago? I'm, I'm, I was a total, on, total air first, freshener version. first car air freshener. Yeah, I don't like car air fresheners. Ago. No, I don't like car air fresheners. <coughs> I really, they, they, you know, they're one of those smells that is clearly a smell masking a slightly worse smell. And I don't know, it, it just, they bother me. So so is it it's a bit like a heavy smoker just putting excessive aftershave on just to yeah. mask the fact they've been out for a cig? <laughs> yeah, exactly. It doesn't quite, Never doesn't works. quite work for Never you. Never works. Um, and also, I hate things dangling from the rearview mirror, but I bought a vanilla magic tree and I hung oh, it from I used one to love of the, them. the grab handles in the back. It just made me want custard creams. Every time I got in the car, yeah. I'd go, hmmm, custard creams. I might have to buy a packet of custard creams on the way to work. Um, do you know what? That's a bloody good idea, Rich. So anyway, yeah, just to sum up, Fur Orange, the the look, the, the Fur Orange, the appearance and smell of those air fresheners just makes me think of very, very thick Vauxhall velour. Yeah. <laughs> and like you say, there's there's a whiff of tobacco smoke that's desperately trying to be masked yeah. by s- <laughs> said air freshener. <laughs> okay. I'm, Simon, I'm we've always... managed to flog your demo, so, you know, just leave the windows open for the morning and we'll be fine. Yeah, put a couple of creep creep little foot orages under the seats just <laughs> stick them under that's what i would do i have to say whenever i've gone to view a car to buy if it's if it's unnecessarily fragranced inside mm. you do immediately go what are you masking it's mm. a bit like post number two in the toilet what shall i do <laughs> do i spray it? you know in the case of this household we still got lots of christmas um spiced apple air freshener left over i'll give it a toot on the spiced apple no one will know of course they'll know they'll know exactly what you've done because you haven't put spiced apple aftershave on although that would be bloody good that'd be right up poor hollywood street that'd be amazing <laughs> Oh, imagine that. Apple and cinnamon across the neck with a with a hint of <laughs> sandalwood. I mean the honestly the ladies would just be just be coming out of nowhere like a it'd be like a dog whistle. I know we're pretty confident having Said discussed nobody. it uh, on a video once that Paul Hollywood is a very musky man. Um mm. and I'm sort of amazed he doesn't make his own. Maybe he does. Because he knows I'd how love to, it. I'd how love to it if he does. put things together ingredients wise, doesn't he? But if he if he just manufactures musk in his kitchen when uh, he's not uh, baking. I want to put the word out to the world that I think a car enthusiast's scent would be really good where you couldn't where there was this sort of like carefully melded cocktail mm. of uh, it has to be WD40 because yes. I think that that it's universally an interesting smell. Mm. And then You'd have to be quite careful with the sort of the kerosene or the uh, the, the, the no, super unleaded whatever, and then you'd have. What else would you bring? It. I'd have to bring in something like a little bit of new car smell. Not not a bad thing. Make some um, people nauseous. So you'd have to be. You'd have to you know, make sure you you do your your, your R and D correctly so that people don't feel sick when they meet you. Yeah, Chinese um, car buyers hate new car smell apparently, and and it's one of the things that's driven the quest to eradicate it. Um, really? Yeah, so Geely have launched a car not that long ago that uses no glue in the interior because glue is one of the contributors to new car smell. There are loads of reasons why new car smell is a thing, though. I investigated this years ago, and I got so much research that I panicked and didn't do anything with it because I couldn't, couldn't cram it <laughs> well, into couldn't a column. councate it. Yeah, I, said, I, was, I only did it for an Evo column, and it's like, you know, back then there were 700, 750 words, and I was, just, I was like, that's too much. I can't do anything with this. It's too too long. Abort, abort mission. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But there's loads of, <laughs> someone told me that, like, the plastics, obviously, and the pla- but he, the, he said even, like, your dashboard mouldings, the the smell can be affected by not only the the stuff they're made from, but also how they're stored and stuff like that. You and it's really complicated. So, and the actual really? goal is, and this was years ago. I think someone from Toyota said to me, the goal is a zero smell new car. But what's a zero smell? Well, it just doesn't smell of anything, which is you think is pretty hard. I say, though, I mean, it's got to be impossible, Rich. I quite it like some new car smells, like, you know, isn't it? Yeah, well, you think so, wouldn't you? But then I suppose some stuff doesn't smell. I also wonder if it's like the think some things smell to some people and not to others. Because so I've just had to plug in my laptop. I totally forgot to, and of course it's got circa two thousand and eight batteries. <laughs> course, it's got like <laughs> a ten minute battery life. But um, well, it's a, 
everything smells. It's a bit like you think your house doesn't smell because you've already, you're in it all the time. Mm. When you get out of it, then you go back in. It's we've talked about the sort of slight phobia of being in a long journey on your own in a car, windows up. You've probably started super early. Let's just say you're on your third coffee and you had a curry the night before. So there's there's some cabin aroma kicking about and then you get to your destination before you can get out the car the other person just climbs straight in mm. and of course they're going to witness the compression yeah. of of the air uh, that's definitely second hand um, you don't think it's probably all that but it could be appalling couldn't it it could a bit like going around to going around to other people's houses when they're cooking we've talked about that oh before. there's nothing worse Maybe the Chinese market's going to be well into that. I want my car to smell like my mate's mum's cooking <laughs> when I open the door. <laughs> well, maybe that's why that man I saw in an Overfinch Range Rover, he, he's uh, whatever he does for a living, it involves him being in the car for a long time and then meeting with people. <laughs> and to avoid any risk of having a fruity car, he, um, he just, he just he, ladles it. Yeah, absolutely spoons on the musk and then... But what's funny, that just oh, the, the other well, thing I was going to say image. is that I once, one of the most intense musk experiences I've had in recent years was when I met the man who owns Overfinch. And Seriously? Yeah, and he, he, he definitely musked up quite strongly. And to the extent that this was pre-COVID, he shook my hand once when we met and then a short time later when we said goodbye. And, uh, and I could smell his aftershave for the rest of the day. Oh, so he put it on with his hands old school method. Oh yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what you got me thinking? I bet the I bet Overfinches have a an option for um, a perfumery in the glove box. So the glove box comes down, and it's like that scene from Anchorman with Sex <laughs> Panther, where it all <laughs> the great smell of Overfinch, yeah. overpowering Finch. Over- it could be called. <laughs> Obviously, that's the when you go for the extra engine spec. It's called the overpowering finch. But also, what about other finches? I, I mean, as, as someone that's interested in wildlife, I mean, could we not? Could overfinch not add a couple of other derivatives in of finches? What, what type of finches are there? Well, you could do. You could, do a, you could well goldfinch. Goldfinch. Cl- clearly, it'd be for the um, you know the Middle East market. Everything would be very gold and um, expensive if they've not um, considered metal. this they're missing a trick they gold totally I mean, finch doo, wow, doo. wow 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 he's the one the one who's put an excessive amount of aftershave on ah, from his now, glove box look to guys sponsor. listen look I there was something I meant to bring up last week and I forgot which is my um, personal car dilemma for 2021 um because okay. talk to me Terry Tips. our Jag I-Pace which is our family car is on a lease and it's going back in March and I was going to extend it but because yeah. the deal we have on that car was as they belatedly admitted a mistake and uh, it's also probably a loss leader well exactly because well, the, the, the supplying dealer told me 130 people got I-Paces as a result of this offer that it turned out was a mistake so and they honoured them as well which was bloody hell good but uh, it's it, when I said can I extend their system doesn't recognise the current deal because it was a mistake and so the price goes up quite dramatically okay so the jag is going and no and I was hoping you because I, I know you were umming and ahhing about keeping it I know and now I, every You've time I drive it. it or look at it I go shit but it's not. I mean, I'm not. I'm not going to fork out a load more for it because it's silly. We don't use it that much at the moment, anyway. So it's off. No. And because we that. don't use the car at the moment very much, um, I was going to find something to replace it, and can't find any good deals on iPaces. So that that avenue is closed. Um, which it's okay as long as we don't need to go anywhere. Which at the moment we don't like. You know, if we need to get all of us kids plus dog plus luggage in, then my Defender is not optimum because it's a 90 and the dog goes down the middle bit between the seats which have got the kids in them in the back oh, not a lot right, of bag room you could do or I, could, I don't know lots of head space yeah. you know lots of cabin or do we just need a stop gap family car partly because I don't want the Land Rover getting fucked up inside and our children just you know what children are like particularly the age are 
they just cover everything in crap and sticky stuff and i'm a bit precious about well that's why that's why our family cars always have the granny rug on the back seat oh yeah to stop the di- the divots from the children's seats crisps semi suck sweets yeah honestly tartan tartan rug every time yeah or a mate of mine who's also got an eye pace at the moment <coughs> went absolutely bananas and got like this sort of basically like sheets of tarpaulin that completely <laughs> encase the back of the car. It's extraordinary, oh, but what well, like um, taxi driver sort of anti sick? Uh, yeah, precautions. yeah, yeah. But but everywhere, wow. yeah. Like it's extraordinary. But then you know, I think I know who you're talking about. But I, Did he, I think yeah. That. Okay, <laughs> I'll have to have words with him. Um, anyway, so look, sorry. Long story short, is I've started brazing um, some sort of cheapish cars that might do as i thought i just want something i'll buy it outright that's just a workhorse i can let the dog rampage all over it and the kids get sticky bits everywhere it'll be fine and for some reason i started looking at old shape discoveries which oh seriously i don't know why i just did but then i discovered that the when the ultra low emission zone extension comes in to london where i live later this year your standard disco four uh with a v6 diesel which is pretty much all you can get in those will be liable to pay 12 pound 50 a day just for driving around our neighborhood so that's Mm. no good um Mm. so that's when my search moved for the practical stopgap family car to um a supercharged old shape range rover seriously <laughs> well i mean i i, I can't believe i'm so you, you you don't want to mess up the the like heavily rubberized floors of your defender yeah. <laughs> but it's got so beige you, seats it's got beige cloth seats this is the problem it was not a practically you can spray designed that car tef- you can spray that coating on it which i've seen from a company called carbon collective i think like a detailing right company and they've they've got this lovely potion that you spray on and it sort of repels stuff like coffee yeah because i looked for some of that when i got the car because i thought these seats are gonna yeah. get fucked up um and i was just looking for old school scotch guard which i don't think you can get anymore but um uh yeah I was, okay well i'll look into that because in fact Have a goosey. there's already been a spillage in my land Rover, which uh, attracted my chagrin which is tv's james may spilt a cup of tea in it and, oh yeah, um, I remember you saying. Didn't he just borrow it for like a short drive? No, he was in the passenger seat. I was giving him a lift. I was in. Oh, okay. We were going from the Been hotel to the Grand Tour tent in Oxfordshire when we were filming that show, and um, and he he took a takeaway tea from the hotel, and he was fumbling it. He was trying to get the lid on it as we got in the car, and I was like, "Are you sure about this, mate?" And he was like, no, "Oh, it'll be okay." And I was like, "You know, he is a precise man, and it, anyone could be trusted not to." cock it up it's him a Priscel, Priscel but then he, he did cock it up and he, he opened the lid or something and as we you know obviously the ride in that car is a little bit jiggly and um, don't know what you're talking about and the roads uh, between the hotel and the studio were a bit bumpy and um, and I just heard him go oh ports and I knew something was up and I looked over and there's a big puddle of tea between his legs and um, to his credit when we got to the studio, he swung into action as only a precise and pedantic man can, and he got loads and loads of kitchen roll and water and Christ knows what else, and he he took care of it. And there is no stain on that seat, so um, so he did a good job. But it was it still displeased me because you know the seats are very light coloured and impractical. Um, anyway, no, I just uh, so d- the absurd thing is because the extension of that ultra low emission zone is. Um, sort of based around the emission standards of the engine but they're they're very out of kilter depending on whether it's diesel or petrol even quite recent diesels get clobbered with the charge whereas why why are you buying the car for i don't know what's what's its what's its typical journey is going to be because in which case you just want something really slaggy but what well I, i you've got two children you don't need another discovery you don't need a discovery no, I know it. Where are you going? What are you going to do? The bloody like camel trophy on the way to the nursery? You might do. It's, it's very hilly it's in like North a t- London. It's a two and a half ton car for I a know. town vehicle. It's just I just daft. I know it's just buy a Focus Estate for seven hundred quid. Mm. 
Oh, there you go. It's not as you nice see, though, you is it? You won't do it. You won't do it. Well, it won't, won't do it. Because we don't really need it. It is. All. We're go- I'm not going to buy anything at the moment. because. Hang on. You've just really said it's need. not as nice. I would totally disagree with that. What? I cannot a 700 stand the, pound the body roll with the is not as nice as a supercharged Range Rover. No, Discovery's gone. Well, not can, getting a Discovery because they get congestion charged. Uh, you could buy an immaculate Focus first gen for 700 quid. I know. Like, you know, old man owned gear. I just would never want a supercharged Range Rover. I don't have any interest in one at all. Well, I'm not going to let you go in it then. No. But people are always surprised. They go, well, yeah, but it's because it's a supercharged V8. It's, I know, it's a supercharged V8 at, attached to something I have got no interest in owning at all. Because all it is, it's just going to rinse you every single day of your life and it won't go around corners. And I'm out. Well, it does go around corners. It just. No, it doesn't. They're shit. They're shit at going round corners. I mean, Range Rovers are awful round corners. Well, it's they not give, a caterum, give, is it? But it's it's different. I just, it's, I just people people think they're brilliant family cars. Like, well, they're not really because they cost about a hundred and forty quid to fill the tank, and you have to fill it every three days, and it will go wrong because it's. What don't, it is. No, well, hmm, uh, and no. you can't repair it yourself. No, well, and you just want and, and you just want a quick stop gap car. Just buy bloody hell, just buy an Audi A4 Avant that's for like thirteen hundred quid. It's just not Do interesting, it. though, is it? I think so. You think a, a thirteen hundred pound all, Audi A4 Avant is interesting? I, it can, but well, look, okay, buy buy an Audi Allroad twin turbo V6. Oh no, God, Jesus Christ! I mean, do you know what? I'd I'd put more faith in an old Range Rover than one of those. They're, they're horrific. What, would you? Yeah, they're famously I flaky. Feel, I feel this is our this is our feature coming on. If only we were allowed to do a road trip, you can buy a really high mileage supercharged Range Rover, and I'll buy a really high mileage <laughs> Audi All Road, and we'll have intercom system. <laughs> Whose air suspension will let go first? <laughs> Got a bit of a dragster stance going on there, mate. No, nope, want it to be like that. That's how I want nope. it. Uh, Suddenly it's gone really hard. That's because I've put wooden blocks in the airbags because <laughs> they've gone. I couldn't, couldn't afford to have the steely steel springs swapped in, so I've just put wooden blocks in there. I um, I did actually I find... Want, I want to buy you a car now. I, I did say I'd ruled out... I buy you one? I, I said I'd ruled out a Discovery, but I did find a Discovery 3 with a V8 in it for five grand. Um which I did briefly go, hmm, okay. Um, I think I just want to get some idiotically large internal combustion out of my system before I go back to an electric car. I think that's what it is. Uh, I mean, it's, it's funny that you're going from an... I know, hang on. Why don't you stick with Jag? Why don't you say, I'm going to spend three grand on a Jag that I don't care too much about, that the kids can enjoy, that the dog might have somewhere. I mean, that would be the difficult mm, one, dog, the dog, wouldn't it? Dog. No hatch. Mm-mm. Or... Well, apart from an X type estate, and I'm not having an X type estate, so why not? Because they're just not interesting. Oh, what? Not even the four wheel drive one? No, I don't Ooh, think so. Sure, there's one lives around the corner for me, and I did look at it and go, "Oh, I could no, no." You know what I saw this morning though? I saw um, uh, the C class, the um, the sort of first C class after it replaced the 190. Yeah, 2005 see... era. No, pre that 90s. No, pre that. And I. I, oh yes, yes. Sorry, yeah, yeah. I you don't see them around a lot because they were they were from the, you know, the age of rust in Ben's terms, and they, they were. But this one, it was a C one eighty automatic, so it'll be slow as shit. But it was it looked really <laughs> tidy, really tidy. Like I couldn't see any visible rust on it, and those things visibly rot like bilio, don't they? So I was looking, I was going, oh yeah, Whoa, quite fancy that. It had a cloth interior as well. Like it was proper oh. boggo, but um, it wasn't for sale. It was just parked at the curb. But but I found myself going, oh. Do you know those Mercedes? If you if you, I'm going to go a bit a- ASMR now. If you go really close, a bit like putting a shell, like a conch, to your ear. If you put your ear to the wheel arches of a Merc of that area, you can just hear it rusting. It sounds like someone's dropped a Barocca in a glass of water. <laughs> yeah, you know, it does. It does. It's exactly. It's it is exactly that. It's just that. Has someone put milk on Rice Krispies near my head? Oh no, no I, I just could just. An uh, and of course, you get the same sensation from buying any Alfa Romeo pre nineteen ninety. 
Um, yeah, they're not mega. Actually, are they? Me- when did when did Alphas stop being so mega rotty? Though I think eighties they sort of licked it. But yeah, eighties. What was the seven? Did the seventy five didn't rot heavily? I don't think. No, I feel like it. Maybe it was. Maybe it's Gulf. How do you say it? Gulf. 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 Uh, do you know the West last country galvanizing? The last kings of rot were the. 210 E-Class and the Ford K, I believe. Oh yeah, the cut with the with the um the fuel filler. Fuel filler area. Fuel filler always goes and the, yeah, the, the, the right. door bottoms and the sills go as well. Bloody hell, I, did you see though? There was, just, a, there, was a, there was a car for sale last week um with forty three miles on it or something. What? Yeah, and the backstory and it was immaculate as you'd hope. It'd been garaged, one owner. And the backstory was that an old lady had bought it. She'd driven it home. She'd got frightened on the, the drive home, so she just put it in the garage and never drove it again. What? Yeah, it's amazing. It's funny how people make those decisions, and you don't think, well, I'm not going to use it again, so I'll just get the garage to come and pick it up and pay me some money for a trade-in on it, and that'll be that. But no, they just go, no. I've had an experience, I'm never going to drive that car ever again. <laughs> ever again. I'm just, just going to get, I mean, this is from the mid-90s, so what is it? basically she was going, I'm just going to get £7,000 and shut it in the garage. And, but, but That's then exactly it. It's a biscuit the, the, tin with 7K in it. <laughs> yeah, but the mice are slowly gnawing at the money, so it's not seven grand. It's six and a half, now it's six, now it's five and a half. Well, Until such a point, yeah. I, I don't know what it sold for. It was, I think a dealership sold it to a collector. Um, this this weirdly low mile one last week and um, yeah so it's gone to a safe home I assume I do has. love I do love those sorts of cars being being discovered or people eccentric people being bothered to try and preserve <laughs> such ridiculousness I have to say the problem is when you buy a car like that you can't really drive it because no. the entire point of it is the fact it's a time capsule if you remove the time capsuleness it's just a super clean Ford car. And that's not quite the same anymore, is it? A bit like there was a Metro that went up for sale fairly recently. It had very, very low, not quite that low mileage, but like 2,000 miles mm. for an early 80s city car. And you're like, well, that's amazing. But what do you do with it? Yeah. <laughs> you Nothing. just kind of stare at it? I don't know. Yeah. It is an ornament, isn't it, really? It is an ornament. It's a very cool ornament. But well, you I told trailer you it to shows to show it to other Metro perverts or yeah. car I can't, enthusiasts. Yeah. The Metro had a birthday, didn't it, last week, in between this podcast and the last one? I think it turned 40. No, that was last year. Oh, was it? Yeah, October 1980, I think the Metro was Was it? Was it 80? I thought it was 81. No. Oh, gosh, I'm totally out there. That's not even... You want to check your your Metro anniversary calendar? I think you've got it on the wrong page. (laughs) (laughs) I think the the next big one will be something like, you know automatic transmission introduced or something like that um but or the mg metro that'll be quite soon 82 oh yeah and then the turbo <sighs> gotta uh, say gotta say my daughter got a mobile phone for christmas first one really first one yeah oh my god it's the beginning of the end but um d- d- park the discussion around that because i still don't really agree with it she was choosing <laughs> a ringtone and she said oh i think i want back in black by acdc and my yeah. heart melted. I thought that's that's pretty cool for a, an eleven-year-old to decide. Yeah, that, that is cool. Voluntarily, and um, huh. <clears throat> and of course, I hear it a lot now. And I know that old Brian Johnson is a good a good bloke and a car nut. And I keep thinking, why restrict yourself to just black? Could we not have had a couple of other options? Or maybe could he? Maybe if he's bored during lockdown, could he? Could people write into him and say, oh, could you? Could you say it, but like with my actual paint number um, and a name? <laughs> so like it's back different. Back in million red or something. Yeah. So I just thought, oh, let's just go straight into um, British Motor Company na- name BMC. Okay. Back in GR twenty nine Cumulus Grey. That'd be all right. And you go, and you say, Brian, if you do that, I'll give you. A, I'll send twenty quid to your, your charity. charity. <laughs> I, yeah, I was going to. I don't. I mean, I don't think he needs the money, but I suppose if he did it for charity and he was a bit bored. Back in BG fifteen, sandy beige, and I'm going to have a man, a man, a man, a man, a man, a man. It could work. It could. Send, um, uh, so yeah, we, I'm sure we know how to get in touch with him. We could. Um, I know someone that knows him quite well. 
I'm sure you I know do as well. I wonder if it's the same person. No, maybe not. Anyway, not to. Well, worry. let's see if we can. Should we, should we do that whole? Let's see if we can pull some Smith and Sniff strings. <laughs> I wouldn't pull any of the Smith and Sniff strings. <laughs> cause a load of <laughs> cause a load of isopon to come out and a load of chicken wire and newspaper and you go, oh, shit. <laughs> wasn't as well made as oh it was. that's exactly it that's that's the ingredient that's missing from the ultimate car enthusiast aftershave a little bit of david's isopon <laughs> but just a little bit because you know how just potent it is bit. because yes. it is <laughs> it's heady it's heady like shit that chili is. That's powder heady. of uh, car repairs um, have you ever opened a tin just a little bit with your nose close no. of isopon no car body filler bloody no. hell man you've got to be careful oh is it, does it make you a bit giddy Oh, you've got to be so careful. Oh, it's it's seriously potent. No naked flames, for sure. Mm. Not that you would, because these days, if it was dark, you'd use a torch rather than a flaming, <laughs> a flaming, well, a flaming I mean, branch. It depends where in the country you are, but yeah, I, I don't know. Um, I was going to bring up something that you sent to me, uh, talking as we sort of were about cars, but car, I, I, it's actually not related, it's just a new paragraph. You sent me that link to that abandoned golf that uh, all the people on the street where it's dumped. Oh, it had a, had a birthday party or a, an anniversary. A one-year anniversary of being dumped on their street. <laughs> being an abandoned car that the council can't be bothered to take away. Which I, I thought was, was fantastic. In Shefford, which looks which, like a typo of Sheffield, but it's not, is it? Is that near you? Shefford is just down the A1 between me and Bedford, I think. Uh, okay, I thought I'd So it's, it it's side, not far so. from where we used to film a lot of the Smith & Sniff videos. Okay. Yeah. Off of uh, yeah. Baldock Services area. Yeah, yeah. I'll come to Baldock in a minute. Um, oh, will you? Yeah, but I just want to <laughs> okay. say about this this golf. I thought was fabulous. The the story that uh, you sent me from Auto Evolution um, says residents in Shefford, UK, decide to throw an abandoned Volkswagen Golf the birth par- the birthday party it probably <laughs> never had back when it was in use. The five door hatchback has been abandoned on George Street for a little over a year, and despite several complaints filed with the council and the mayor, no one seems eager to move it. So, as a form of protest, neighbours got together and threw the golf a birthday party on its one year anniversary. <laughs> Included homemade decorations, supermarket bought party decorations, drawings, and what looks like a list of complaints filed with the council for the car's removal. And it's there's just... some pictures, and they've just covered it in, yeah, in, in things, birthday I love it. things. When, um, when I saw that. Um article that somebody I can't remember somebody forwarded it to me what I loved was the fact that the council's official response was well it just looks too good to have been abandoned and that's yeah. it looks too new and it's too good well yeah but also somebody could have dropped dead in their home and they could have been dead for a year now and nobody knows and that's yeah. their car it does it says here so I, I hadn't actually scrolled down to the bottom of the thing where it says uh, the, the council refused to remove the car because they thought it looked too good to actually be abandoned this despite the fact that it's slowly filling with litter like discarded junk food containers shampoo bottles and all it's slowly filling so it's like it's unlocked hang on shampoo bottles been... who just has a bag full of shampoo bottles I mean I haven't got that much hair so I don't use shampoo but a lot of people in my family do but we don't exactly like get through the bottles of shampoo no. <laughs> weird isn't it the one thing that go- oh they've been littering shampoo bottles again um well tramps no, just- can use them I mean they're a really they're a warm warmer place to sleep put the seat on full recline a long time ago when i used to live in um, the tufnell park area of london there was a, a renault 5 campus uh, that just sort of lived down the road from me and one day i walked past it and one of the back side windows had been put in it had been broken into yeah so I saw that and then the next day I walked past and the owner had put a bin bag over it in the accepted style of course the morning after that I used to walk past every day on my way to work and I, the morning after I walked past the bin bag was still there but it had obviously been torn a bit and there was a homeless man sleeping on the back seat just torn a bit well, well, he need a bit of ventilation. <laughs> well, no, I presume that's how he'd got into the car was by tearing the bin bag. Would well, you I not guess just it sleep on just, glass? But there's people that do living cars. I think we've had this conversation before. There was a woman in the 1970s in London that lived in a lived on in a Ford. Uh, it was a Ford console or a Ford. Yeah, I think. Of, I've, of, 
Yeah, do you remember it, she she was in the she was on in the papers a lot because she was apparently a really quite nice pleasant lady that lived on a half decent she'd picked a half decent street yeah wasn't it in and the car hadn't been moved in something like 10 years it was in, yeah somewhere sort of quite quite suburban and pleasant like surbiton or something it was uh, wasn't there a celebrity angle as well i think you might have sent me this story I'll, I probably have. I'm getting I'll, to that age where I can't up. remember what I say or do. It's quite <laughs> bad, isn't it? <laughs> Who is this? Um, the uh, my dog's going nuts downstairs. Idiot! You got intruders? Probably. No, she'd lick them. She just—it's the postman who she fucking well knows is not going to steal our stuff, but she just shouts at him anyway. She's buffoon. Um, that, that golf story reminded me of. Uh, have I told you about this? The Sour Lady and the Honda Jazz in my neighbourhood. S- did you say sour? There's this sour old woman who lives near me, and she's just sort of famously a bit, a bit sour. And she has, by quirk, no one around here has driveways generally, but by a quirk of where her house is on a corner, she has a little driveway, um, and she has an old shaped polo, like a '90s one, and it's, so it's perfectly small enough to fit on her drive just but she never parks her polo on her drive and she never parks in front of her drive she parks in front of her house and if anyone parks in front of her drive she leaves a note on their car of course she does and this, this is just sort of well known in our neighborhood oh, don't park in front of that drive because even though she doesn't seem to ever use it she gets very narky if anyone blocks it um and then one day someone abandoned the honda jazz halfway across her drive and it was there for almost a year really yeah did she did she not move it herself well no because she couldn't because it was not hers and i looked it up and it was it was taxed and insured so it was a legit car which is why you couldn't get the council to hoik it away uh and they didn't take it away until the mot ran out but in the meantime you know there's that thing where the car interiors go very moldy sometimes yeah it's usually foodstuffs remnants of foodstuffs on the steering wheel Oh, on the edge of the seats. Yeah, it's start. always the steering wheel, isn't it? And then, and yeah. then I had a car that went a bit mouldy once, and it was steering wheel, gear, gear stick, and um, the seat belt clasp. And I guess yep. it's just stuff you touch with like greasy fingers or something. Oh, it is. It's cr- it's your crisp fingers, Rich. Yeah, and the 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 jazz went full furry inside, but oh. could not be could not be moved. And but then I started. It became a bit of a thing in the neighbourhood. It's like you know. To, that jazz is still there she must be furious of course so yeah the the jazz stayed there for almost a year and um i can't I started believe a to year. Worry. i know but i started to worry that she might think it was me just because i think she's aware that i work with cars because she's left notes on press cars that i've accidentally left sort of slightly across her drive and um or just you know just 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 sort of you know overhang just over the drop curb and she leaves a note um uh, so I, yeah, I started to worry that she might think it was kind of some kind of prank from someone in the neighborhood which as far as i'm aware it wasn't but then i did start to wonder a little bit and i mentioned it to a friend of mine in the car trade just told him this story and he went well i'll tell you what if the jazz gets taken away and you want to really piss her off i'll i'll, I'll trailer down some shitty old part x of mine and we could leave that there for a while if you want <laughs> I didn't. Should we should we just I keep buying but. should we just keep buying um old shitters on Gumtree and having them <laughs> delivered to that address? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Just saying just stick it on the drive, mate, it's absolutely fine. Don't knock on the door, I'm busy. I do I work nights. I yeah. work nights, so Well actually no, could you could you drop it off at four AM please and do please be quiet. That would be great. Thanks ever so much. Cheers. Yeah. It did cross my mind, but I didn't do it because it felt spiteful, but um even though it would have been quite funny. Um Anyway. The the lady that we were just talking about who lived in a car for many years, her name was yes. Anne Naismith. She lived she was known as the car lady of Chiswick. Oh Chiswick. Okay. And she was described as a cherished um character of the area. She used to live in an old Ford um oh, I can't remember the name of it, the old Ford that looked American. Uh is it Zephyr or a Zodiac? Yeah. And, oh well both and, I guess, yeah. And then latterly when it got taken away by the council she got a mercedes 123 230 te and no way yeah unfortunately she got killed in in 2015 um she got hit by a lorry crossing one of the roads in the street where she lived um she used to carry lots of bags and she was um apparently decided to live in a car after a failed 
relationship and what? she was a concert pianist oh my god it just goes to show that people are strange right you know there's some strange people about but interesting nevertheless wow yeah, That's, I love the um, fact there's a there's a picture on the internet of her climbing out of her 230T, which is cool because that's actually the best one, two, three choice, even yeah. if you're not going to move it ever. It's, um, <laughs> the 230 was always my favourite. I've had all of them. I've had the, the 80, the 30, and the 200. I have actually might have had the diesel as well, but we won't talk about that. 240, yeah, is it? The, 40 oh, yeah, two, the 240 diesel was, was like people who are stubbornly tight to the point where they go, <laughs> no, I'm buying, I'm buying this because it, it's bound to be the most thrifty, and you realise it hasn't actually got enough power to make the car go along. Hang it's on, not wasn't there a 200 worth. diesel in that shape as well, which was probably like... I mean, that or is that like, like Greek market only or something? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> 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 okay. For some reason, you can only buy it on Malta and it had 47 horsepower. It's, something it's, like that. And yeah. it had and three gears. It's a tax dodge kind of Mercedes. <laughs> I don't know, but it's awful. No, didn't I've have never... a back seat. You couldn't actually open the back doors, even though it looked like you could. Yeah, one of those. Don't you just love all those tax dodge? You know, like, it's a bit like the the van versions of the discovery and 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 latterly the suzuki jimny coming back but only as a commercial yeah. vehicle and i spoke to suzuki and w- i went can you not just buy one and then order a back seat through you mm. and they went no you can't do that i went are you sure though guys are you sure were they winking a lot as they said this and do you know what i said to them i said but, but are you sure though because you, you know that it's what I'm thinking, and they went, "No, you, we can't, because it's been intentionally made." I, don't, I, I need to see this to believe it. It's been intentionally made without any of the seat mountings in the back. Oh, so you can't actually mount a seat to anything. So it's but like again, the, I, the, the GT Porsche GT3s. That, yeah, but you know, you just simply cannot put the back seat in. But you can though. If I, if you gave me enough money today to buy a GT3. Within four weeks, I'd have a back seat with Isofix in it because <laughs> it's got a floor pan and it's got mount- it's got some areas of which you could fabricate mountings. I just don't buy that you can't. Well, it's when it's we still finished a, it's still our, 911, isn't it? When we finished our um, old shape Range Rover versus A6 All Road Air Suspension Collapse Challenge, we'll take <laughs> things up a notch by buying you a. <laughs> 911 GT3 with the Johnny Fitz and Isofix <laughs> compatible backseat challenge and Listen, then we crash test the car to see if it works we, we would be in grave danger of looking like one of those TV evangelists who claims that he's humble and um, thanks for all the donations before getting onto his private crisp white jet and flying to the next <laughs> to the yes. next prayer meeting where he's going oh yeah yeah guys thanks for um, your Patreon contributions it helps us to keep the channel going PS I've just bought a new GT3 Tory yeah is that why are you thanks. wearing a Rolex Daytona oh the Lord bless me <laughs> with this yeah Thanks, mate. Yeah, um, oh, well, now, actually, speaking of tarting for money sort of bit, I, I wanted to... I've got a new book, uh, and I wanted to plug it, because if I've, not here, I think, I've, I think I've seen it. You never even told me you were writing this. Well, so this is the thing. There's, there's Obviously, there's a sort of official story about this. It's a, it's a, the official story is it's a lost novel by uh, the car journalist Roy Lanchester, who is, of course, a fictional character of my website and in 1983 he wrote a sort of Cold War thriller about um, (laughs) the attempted theft of a British fighter plane design and the attempt to um, track down who was uh, who was infiltrating the British uh, aircraft industry and stealing from it and uh, and then sorting it out with a trip behind the Iron Curtain Um, and, and that's the backstory out. that that Roy wrote this book in 1983, and then um, couldn't get it published, so he just stuck it in a drawer, and then it's finally seen the light of day now. Um, but the real story is obviously I just wrote it um, last year, and <laughs> I um, <laughs> oh no, spoiler alert! But uh, I, I, there's this thing uh, called National Novel Writing Month, or it's, they use the hashtag #NaNoWriMo. Um, part part of the thing. I know it's. I, can't, I can never remember it. No, no, right, right. That's mate. just. That's about as catchy as. It looks better written down with some capitals in it, but <laughs> okay, uh, okay. Trust me. I, I believe you. I believe you. It's, it's mostly an American thing, and the idea is that it's a challenge to people who you know want to write a novel or are writing a novel that you, you through the month of November, you try and write fifty thousand words, 
and I sort of belatedly thought why don't I give that a try and I'd had this idea for this sort of lost Roy Lanchester book uh, that was only sort of half formed I thought fuck it I'll just take a run at it so um, yeah I started on the 4th of November and I finished on the 7th of December so it was written in quite a rush um, but it's sort of meant to be deliberately shite so that was okay and um, the problem with Roy is particularly Roy of 1983 is that he sort of um, overdoes the you know spy style writing a little bit so um, he's constantly describing the lead character as muscular in ways that are not necessarily quite appropriate uh, so there's a sex scene in which it's revealed that he has a muscular penis and sometimes he thinks mm. things inside his muscular head so it's it's obviously it's meant to be dog shit but um for oh, comic gosh. effect cold, cold war era sex scene okay the sex scene's really bad but okay. it, I, you know with the proviso that it's meant to be a fact and i was sort of worried it's not bad enough but um i got a bit coy and bailed out of writing any more details so yeah essentially if you're interested in a spoof cold war thriller that's deliberately nonsensical in places and was written in a month in 2020 rather than actually in 1983 then um, knock yourself out it's called steel flies and it's supposedly by roy lanchester um I'm sure I'll be mentioning when, when, endlessly on Twitter. <laughs> when you said the name, when, when, you, when I saw the name of the cult, I kept singing Steel Bars by Michael Bolton. <laughs> what? I can, yeah, I'm sure it's a song you're familiar with, right? It's not, no. Oh, frig. Well, you need to listen to it because it's um, it's a Michael Bolton top hit, I would suggest. And really? I don't even know that much about Michael Bolton. No, Apart from I can the fact that he, didn't he have one. cameo appearances in a really funny TV show about four years ago so, that someone put me onto? And I can't remember the name of it, but it was hilarious. He would just turn up and just sing really cheesy songs all the time. He was actually a funny lad. Oh, okay. Yeah, Is this I like when, when Prince turned up in New Girl and you kind of go, Is that really. Actual Prince. Holy shit, yeah. There was just uh, I watched I watched the Graham Norton interview show the other day and he they, he interviewed Jimmy. Oh, I saw that Jimmy the Jimmy Fallon, Fallon table tennis anecdote. Ta- yeah, the Sensational. Prince, the Prince table, I mean, like I couldn't even believe that it was real because it just sounded totally made up. But it was, it was fantastic. It's funny because I watched that exact same show on my own. The next day, I tried to retell the Prince table tennis Jimmy Fallon anecdote to my wife, and as I was telling it, I thought this just sounds shit this sounds like I'm just making up a very random story it's like this is implausibly strange and yeah I was like when Jimmy Fallon told it because he's very good at it, it he it's, was it's it's a fabulous tale have um, you got any you must have a tale like as cryptic as that from the Grand Tour slash TG times um, you must have I mean the one the, the one that you've said before about George Michael phoning the office to complain about his oh, see yeah. if he can get to the bottom of why his Range Rover kept misbehaving. Yeah, that was, still, that was that's excellent. that's that was yeah. so good. It was the will you come on the show? Can I talk about my faulty Range Rover? Well, yeah, you can, but you know, you just do the lap in the car. So, like, no, I don't want to do that. I just want to talk about my faulty Range Rover. <laughs> it's the bit where it's just going it to turn into that, Watchdog. That's what I love about it. It's going to be. It's going to be George Michael staring down the barrel of the camera going, this is just not acceptable. Every time I turn the cruise control on, the left-hand window goes down, and I'm, just, <laughs> I'm at my wit's end. So I've come on national television to, to set this straight immediately. He should have got a... What kind of finch would he have got if he'd gone finch spec with the... Oh, is there, I was going to say song finch, but there's no such thing, is there? I'm not very good on finches. I don't know the types. Oh, yeah, there's got to be a... Hang on, let's have a quick, let's have a quick Google are of you, finches. Are you Googling finches? <laughs> I am Googling. Your wife's shouting from downstairs, Johnny, are you Googling finches again? <laughs> just sounds... Hang on. Types... Only George Michael oh. could have actually is, is the guy we need to save me from the half baked idea I have to Well, buy obviously, an old range over. here we go. T- RSPB website. <laughs> Types of finches. The bird family overview. Here we go. House finch, <laughs> European goldfinch, Atlantic canary finch. Do they really um, say overview? It does say That's overview. Fantastic. You go, oh, here's an overview you. of kestrels. It's from one point. Um, Bull, bullfinch, chaffinch, brambling, which is apparently a kind of finch, common rosefinch, goldfinch, grosfinch. 
Yeah, Hawfinch. Oh, but not spelt like that. H A W, Hawfinch. Um, Greenfinch. Common red pole, a linnet, a parrot, crossbill, classed as a finch apparently, um, Scottish crossbill, <laughs> a serin, which is apparently a finch, a twite, which you got to say carefully, you absolute twight finch. Um, <laughs> that's just a really badly driven over finch, you absolute twight finch. Uh, yeah, they're um, all the finches I've got on the RSPB site, so. There we go. Yeah. Well. Once again, Smith & Sniff proves itself to be um, oh, got a purple one finch automotive podcast that also lists finches. I don't know anything about finches. I think I've just realised that. <laughs> <laughs> what a shameful gap in your general knowledge. <laughs> you know nothing about finches. Honestly. All I know is that when I see a goldfinch, if a goldfinch comes to the garden, I do stop and stare because it's worth it. That's all I know. Yeah, they're pretty, aren't they? They're, good. they're very, very, very beautiful. And you just go, ah, oh, that's pretty cool. Imagine waking yeah. up and flying around and looking like that. That'd be quite cool, wouldn't it? Yeah. Yeah, that's a good yeah. point. Well, anyway, um, I you're think off we've to covered Gumtree to buy an inappropriate I'm, family car. Yeah, I'm going to um, accidentally buy a Hummer H1 that I don't need. And uh, you're going to go and swat up on finches, I suppose. But um, that's probably I am, enough. Actually. I think I am going to this week um i have four things to tell you the first one is that we now have a patreon for this show so if you're feeling generous and you don't mind chucking in a few quid to ensure that we keep doing this toss then um then please do <laughs> and many people already have and we thank you enormously for it we're actually quite overwhelmed by how many people have already joined up and <laughs> the second thing i have to tell you is johnny has a solo youtube channel uh, it's called the late break show so please go and check that out the third thing is that i have several books out now it seems but um one of them is called the um boring book of car trivia volume it two called? it's called boring car trivia volume two yes yeah, uh, yeah or by steel flies by roy lanchester which is a spoof cold war novel um and uh is that what else i have to tell you oh yeah finally um to avoid being recognized in major cities uh, the trick that david bowie used to employ was to go and buy a greek newspaper and then people would see him but assumed it couldn't be david bowie because David Bowie isn't Greek. Oh, I think that's just fantastic. It's probably a tax dodge as well. I bet his accountant said, listen, if you subscribe to a Greek newspaper, um, <laughs> you, you, you'll, it's, it, that, that'll shave 12% off your, uh, your annual tax. And the thing is, that is a brilliant trick, but if I'd seen David Bowie walking down the street with a Greek newspaper, I'd just think, that's so Bowie. He's working on something. He's That's doing what I see. He's looking for inspiration. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> he's he's trying to become a character, or he's putting himself in the position of someone he's going to sing about, or a scenario. Yeah. Yeah. I'm with you on that. Totally. On. He probably. That's why he used to drive some some different cars, putting himself in a character. Yeah, a character who had a, a Volvo. Um Two six two two six two Batoni, yeah. yeah. Oh, in fact, if anyone's interested in buying a Volvo two six two Batoni, not one that was owned by David Bowie, sadly, uh, I am going to be selling one very soon. Um, and my wife doesn't want me to keep it, so please, if you're <laughs> seriously interested, can you let me know? It has to go. <laughs> Serious offers, please. All right. Well, we'll see you again for uh, more of Johnny selling his stuff and listing finches and me trying to hawk tat that I've written uh, next week <laughs> same time until then thank you ever so much for listening goodbye goodbye alright Porter it's Saturday morning I'm feeling fresh so if you can hear that gonna... got a bit of brute left listen to this oh absolutely throwing it on my neck's like some sort of really pungent water feature, like 70s male water feature.